Right, so archaeology and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence usually falls under what we'd call computational archaeology, which is computer-based analytical methods for the study of long-term human behavior and behavioral evolution, so mathematically-based methods, or archaeological informatics or archaeoinformatics. Let's get a few definitions out of the way first. Artificial intelligence is the automation of activities that we associate with human thinking, activities such as decision-making, problem-solving, learning, or perhaps more compellingly for archaeology, AI is concerned with intelligent behavior in artifacts. Machine learning is algorithms that use statistics to find patterns in massive amounts of data. It teaches machines how to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. For example, Netflix gathers data on what you watch and then uses that data to push recommendations for you. Deep learning, where, which is machine learning on steroids, it uses a technique that gives machines an enhanced ability to find and amplify even the smallest patterns. This technique is called a deep neural network. Deep because it has many, many layers of simple computational nodes that work together to munch through data and deliver a final result in the form of prediction. There's natural language processing, so how computers can understand and translate human language, for example, chatbots. And computer vision, which is the development of techniques that allow computers to evaluate and analyze images or sequences of images. These are nesting concepts with artificial intelligence being the umbrella definition and machine learning and deep learning and natural language processing within these. And computer vision integrates these concepts. This is obviously a vast oversimplification as it's a discipline into itself that archeology span just kind of steals bits from occasionally. So how does this apply to archaeology? First, a little bit of background. Archaeologists have been using computers to investigate the past since the 1950s when Jean-Claude Jardin created a catalog of over 4,000 Bronze Age tools from the Near East on punch cards. As Gary Locke notes in his formative Using Computers in Archaeology, the development of archaeological computing aligns with broader disciplinary developments as such, many of the earliest uses of computers were for statistics, modeling, information retrieval, and ancillary data processing. This aligns with both the goals of a processual approach to archaeology and with the available technology at the time. Locke cites the 1960s as the birth of archaeological computing and the optimism regarding technology resonates with positivism surrounding science and technology at the time. Computational work was confined to mainframes within large institutions until the invention of the microprocessor in 1971. Julian Richards' survey of computer usage in British archaeology showed computers being used in fieldwork, research, cultural resource management, and museums. Locke notes that the use of this technology was seen as atheoretical, and it was critiqued by post-processualists as part of a processual scientism and quantification. The exception was, among others, Ian Hodder's desire for a post-processual excavation methodology that was reliant on computer technology. Early work in artificial intelligence and archaeology focused on emulating archaeological reasoning with site identification and art artifact analyses. A current review identified the use of artificial intelligence in the following categories. So the use of software for creative interactions with archaeological data, the use of robots and holographic displays to guide and interact with museum visitors, the analysis of methods for classification of artifacts, cataloging and the study of human remains to understand the social and historical context, and the detection of terrestrial archaeological sites with artificial neural networks. I'll only be discussing a very few of these to give you an idea of the wider field. From your reading this week, Instagram and the Bone Trade, Sean Graham and colleagues used computer vision and automated annotation to examine the trade of human remains on Instagram. As mentioned in the article, the sale of human remains is not necessarily legal everywhere, 
and it is a crime that is rarely prosecuted. The authors try to understand the motivation and the aesthetics of trading in human remains. They collected over 100,000 individual photographs and associated metadata. That's information about the image, such as the date and time that it was taken and what camera it was taken with, sometimes where the camera was located. They treated these websites as archaeological sites and the images as artifacts. They used a Microsoft API called Azure to automatically tag these photos. Computer vision is trained on recognizable objects, living beings, scenery, and actions. The API can parse concepts, objects, and scenes, and Graham uses the example of candles plus cake plus blowing equals birthday party, so the concept of birthday party. Through this study, they found that the vendors of human remains voice a love for the beauty of them and suggest they are saving the dead for study and appreciation using tropes from a Victorian understanding of a museum. Graham and colleagues claim to get a sensory experience of how these vendors are curating their online stores and creating their own museum-ish idea of selling these archaeological remains. Heritage bots. So as previously mentioned, heritage bots are increasingly being used to interact with the public. Chatbots are computer programs designed to simulate conversation with human users. These originate with Alan Turing's research, which focus on machines as intelligent devices. The first of these was Eliza, a computer program created in 1964 who emulates a psychotherapist. I've added a link to her in the resources, as I think we all need a little bit of support these days, even if it's just a chatbot. But watch out, as people have become attached to Eliza, and some have even thought she was real. Some of this work on heritage chatbots was part of Angeliki Tizagano's dissertation, who was a digital master's student here at York. She looked at how bots were being used in cultural heritage. Angeliki and a team of researchers then built their own heritage chatbot, a so-called bot of conviction, that they describe as provoking a digitally mediated emotional engagement with heritage content aim to trigger a deeper connection, to critically can reflect on the issues at stake, to challenge and provoke a call to action. They use the Neolithic site of Chatelhuyuk as their test case. To create the content necessary to fulfill these requirements, the team reviewed how users were already interacting with the site through social media, namely Facebook, and held several live chat sessions to see what kind of queries people were making about Chatelhuyuk. They prototyped their interactions with researchers from both the Chatelhuyuk research project team and people who had no prior knowledge about the site. They designed the bot, which they named ChatChat, Chat, to interrogate the user's beliefs and ideas. For example, the chatbot would begin with, Surely you have people buried under your floors. If the users responded positively, they continue. The bot answers, I thought so. So do you have lots of people buried in your house? If the user responds negatively, they ask the bot asks you, well, where do you bury them? Followed by, why would you put them so far away? Don't you want them close to you? Where you can be connected? The finale for the entire interaction is, it is easy to forget when burial places seem so far away, but people live and work above the dead every day. At Chatelhuyuk, we buried our loved ones in places where they could remain a part of our daily lives. It is through our close relationship with the dead that we stayed connected to our past. So note that this was a rule-based chatbot and not an AI bot, but it is a good introduction to the possibilities of chatbots within Heritage. And yes, sadly, it doesn't work anymore. I have a couple links here on how to make a chatbot, and that will be described in more detail anon. For the final example, I'm using ArcAid, of which the Archaeology Data Service is a partner. ArcAid stands for Archaeological Automatic Interpretation and Documentation of Ceramics. It provides automatic recognition and classification of potsherds. It uses machine learning algorithms for decoration and shape recognition from these sherds. I've linked to the website and the resources, and I encourage you to check it out, as there are a lot of videos and explainers. So what happens is basically, 
an archaeologist photographs a pot shard, their characteristics are sent to a comparative collection, which activates an image recognition system, and this system responds with all relevant information within a database. To train the algorithms, the researchers took thousands of photographs of pot shards, including more than 10,000 images of Mahalika, medieval and post-medieval pottery from Barcelona, Roman amphorae, and terrace gelata. They combined classic machine learning tools with neural networks that were trained on general image classification tasks. So this is only a brief overview of some of the things you can do with artificial intelligence in archaeology, but I highly encourage you, if you are interested, to seek out more.